we basically raised pretty much all the rents between like $300 and $600 a unit. The next unit we're going to show you guys, the rent basically doubled. We redid the floors out there. That room was actually shifting. It was sinking six inches, so we had to jack it up shim it out and now it's pretty much level again which is great right these were our rents before yeah. and then the rents after and so cash. now kind of the after repair value yeah so this is what we bought it for and then we put in 90 so we're what is that 320 all in and now we're looking at this number here right what does a $90,000 renovation on a fourplex in Sarnia look like? Well, you're going to find out in today's video with Corey McKinnon. Corey dives deep into the numbers behind a fourplex that he's been renovating unit by unit. One of the units he's turned into an executive rental with a Murphy bed. He's used all sorts of unique, interesting strategies and features for this property. Really excited to show it to you guys, so let's jump into it. Hey guys, welcome to my fourplex. This is a property we picked up just over a year ago and we spent three months renovating it. Um, this is the main floor unit here, really large two bedroom unit. When we first bought this house, it was renting for $800 or $850, all inclusive. And now we're getting $1,400 a month for it. And we didn't do a crazy gut job here. We did like a lot of surface renovations. So we refinished the hardwood floors, um, recoded those. We put in new windows, new doors, which drastically reduced our heating bill. Uh, we did things like light fixtures, taps, uh, paint. Um, lots of easy things. We tore out, uh, we did some new floors in the kitchen, uh, but otherwise it was, you know, not a really intensive renovation. But let me show you the kitchen here real quick because it turned out really nice. So huge rooms here, got all the old trim, you know, even a built-in china cabinet, which is pretty neat. Behind the fridge here was like an extra door. There was like an extra way out. We just figured it, it didn't make much sense. So we closed that off and put the fridge there. They got a portable dishwasher, really nice kitchen here. It's more functional now because before their kitchen was just like right here and that was it. So, um, you know, again, it was a really good burr project. And, uh, you know, when people see the place, they fall in love with it. So that's what you want. And so where were rents originally when you got the property and where are they now? Uh, for all the units. So we basically raised would you like to meet up in person? Live in the GTA or willing to drive to Toronto? Well then come out to a Wright Club event and come meet me and any of the team. We'll be dressed in bright red jackets. It's not hard to find us. We'll also be standing at the Control Your Property booth. I hope to see you guys there at the Wright Club. And so where were rents originally when you got the property and where are they now? Uh, for all the units. So we basically raised pretty much all the rents between like $300 and $600 a unit depending on the unit. So, and the, the, the next unit we're gonna show you guys, the rent basically doubled, so it's pretty cool. So this is a, a bachelor unit, and when we first bought this property, this unit here was renting for about 600 to $650 a month, and now we've furnished it, and we're getting anywhere between 13 to $1,500 a month for it, so it's great. Um, I work with all the relocation companies and executives that come to town, um, sometimes they even put my tenants up in this unit when they just need two weeks before they their other unit opens up, right? So we use this for lots of different things, but I really like the cash flow. And we took a unit that would have needed a lot of repairs to be turned into a, a one bedroom. And we were able to still keep it as a bachelor. It's a really cool bachelor. It's almost 600 square feet and it works really well and the cash flow is like crazy. So we'll take you for a little tour. So how did we solve the problem of not having a, a standalone bedroom? Well, we've got a Murphy bed. So with a Murphy bed, you can just put your bed into the wall. So that's what we did here and uh, works really well. I guess I got some clearance here. Put this guy down and you got your bed. So that's the Murphy bed there. A little bit expensive, but I thought it was worth going with the actual name brand. It comes with a 10 year warranty. I believe so don't quote me on that but um, and super easy to put up like literally they say you can do it with like one finger and you can so and over here is the uh, the dining room and the kitchen so we thought if they don't have their own bedroom they should at least have their own like legit eating area um, and in here we, we just refinished the floors, um, we redid the floors out there. That room was actually shifting, it was sinking six inches so we had to jack it up, shim it out and now it's pretty much level again which is great. Um, bathroom we just gave it a basic refresh so you know new tile work in the shower, new vanity, new lights, new mirrors. We uh, brought an electrician to pop in a couple, uh, pop in a fan and a pot light but otherwise not very much money spent on the bathroom. 
Um, and then the kitchen, we did a, we wanted to give them like a really nice kitchen here. So big kitchen, bigger than some of our other, you know, units for sure. Uh, they got a dishwasher, they have this little, uh, you know, nook area that they can work at with their laptop and everything else, full size fridge. So even though it's a bachelor, it really feels like a one bedroom apartment. That's the, that's the vibe we wanted to kind of give them. Although this room would have been big enough for a bedroom, we would have had to have lifted up the floors, move all the plumbing, all the electrical, move that wall over. And I just, you know, when you got three kids at home, I'd rather spend time with my family. And we can do that in the future once this unit gets tired again and we feel like it's worth doing. But we did the, the cost analysis. There's only gonna be about maybe $100 $75 a month if this was a one bedroom unit. So we just played the card that we had, which it's a, it doesn't have a legitimate bedroom. And we went with the Murphy bed and we can still get 1500 bucks a month furnished. On Airbnb, this unit would rent out for 75 to $90 a night. So Corey's got a breakdown for us, as you guys can see, all the numbers on this fourplex. Reminder, we actually were out here like a year ago, right, when you bought it. So we walked through it, this exact apartment before it was uh, renovated, which is pretty cool. But first of all, Corey, thank you for breaking it down in such detail. I know oh, the fans are going to love this. But can you just kind of walk us through these numbers? Sure, man. I've got a full spreadsheet at home. But a lot of the napkin math that I, I did right off the top of my head when I was looking to put an offering on it, you know, you, you spend more money in certain categories, you save money in other categories, and we basically hit our renovation target, which was great. So um, this, this came on the market. I'm trying to remember what it was actually listed at. I think it was listed at 260, 270. Okay. Um, I know they had a sense that they probably wouldn't get full price. So we weren't the highest offer, we weren't the lowest offer. We came in at 250. After we inspected the place, um, uh, the listing agent who never gives, you know, discounts, um, they actually, you know, their, their client did take, a, did take a credit. So we negotiated a $20,000 credit on closing. So we're actually only into this thing for 230. And uh, it needed a lot of renovations. Now, if this was somebody that didn't have, you know, years of experience with contacts and connections, they could have mm -hmm. easily spent 30 to 50% more on that. Yeah, it's a big right? house. It's, it's a, a big property. It is. So four big units here, a lot of square footage. Uh, we got our three kitchens for $9,800. Roof was a really steep, uh, steep pitch roof. So a lot of roofers call this place a drive-by where they'll literally just keep driving because it's too steep. Yeah. Or they'll just throw out some big numbers. We got quotes anywhere from nine grand to $19,000 for, from, wow. from some drunk guy that just <laughs> wanted to try to cash in, but we said no. And so obviously it's important when you're dealing with these. Are you looking to invest in real estate? You're not sure where to start? Well, come on out on October the 5th where Alfonso Salemi and I, Limo Markman, are gonna be teaching advanced strategies of rent to own and private lending. If you wanted to invest in real estate and don't know where to start, don't want all the hassles of the tenants, the toilets, and all the things that come with being a real estate investor, this is the workshop to attend. You're gonna really enjoy it. We've been putting our hearts and souls into this workshop. It's gonna be a great day out in London. Yeah, we're excited to share with you how you can generate strong returns and have a lot of security. So we'll see you there. Look forward to seeing you in London. And so obviously it's important when you're dealing with these steep roofs, it's gonna cost you a lot more in labor. So you wanna make sure you get good shingles on there to last yeah. as long as possible. Exactly. We went with certainty, like we went with the best, because I don't want to have to redo this roof yeah. again for a long time. Or if we end up selling this place, I don't want someone else to have to deal with it too. I'm always thinking of the in the future if we ever had to buy or you know sell our stuff, I want to make sure that the next person's taken care of too. Mm -hmm. So um, there's e troughs were falling off the house. You know, there's a lot of bricks that need to be repointed. Um, this was a great. I mean, this was half the price of other of other contractors. Uh, we did a lot of vinyl flooring in here, which holds up really well, and we refinished some hardwood floors, which looks really nice too. This was probably our biggest expense right here. Yeah. There was a, a deck, which is the main entrance to this unit that we're in right now, uh, was being held up with four by fours, and it was scary. I remember when we were on it, we are yeah. like, I don't think we can all walk on the stairs at the same time. Um, they put in a huge steel post. They put in six by six construction. I mean, it's it's built extremely well now and people can actually see a view of the water from where they're standing which is which is great out and, on the deck and, and so you kind of made the decision too to build the deck a bit bigger so that it could actually be used as a bit of living space you could have a barbecue yeah. or a bistro set yeah exactly right it's a bachelor so it's like what if you're trying to market a bachelor unit like you got to have some other cool factors to it mm -hmm. right so we're like hey there's outdoor living here and in, into your living as well um, it's had some galvanized, if people have never seen what galvanized plumbing is, you want to get that out of the house because it creates rusty water, it creates low water pressure. A little bit of electrical work needed to be done, not too much. 
Um, light fixtures, plumbing fixtures, we did all the windows and doors, that was another big expense. We got some wholesale pricing and some really good installation costs. Um, quick landscaping job, paint labor, appliances. So in the end, and there was a lot of labor too, just, you know, I had a, I was employing like a renovating contractors here for like three months, yeah. maybe, maybe even four months, right? So it was just a lot of labor, mm -hmm. but. And you know, do you act as the GC on projects like this? Yeah, I act as a GC. I actually tried hiring a, a GC a la carte or by the hour and it yeah. did not work out. Same person that was going to take over the deck for me and they didn't do it. So gotcha. um, sometimes you just have to do things yourself, right? It's uh, the project wasn't quite big enough for me to, you know, on bigger projects, probably over a hundred thousand dollars, it's worth hiring a GC. Sometimes it's a lot of this was just material costs. So, mm -hmm. you know, if it was a bigger project, like if I was doing like full rent, um, additions or something big like that, I would just yeah. put a GC in, in charge of it because gotcha. they usually have all the trades in their back pocket. So mm -hmm. I didn't mind piecing this together for the profit because this is what ended up happening, right? These were our rents before yeah. and then the rents after. So they went up by, I think it's, I don't have a calculator right now, but I know it's well over a thousand dollars, which does a huge, you know, yeah. Pop for your your mm -hmm. after repair and value. So right? this is the unit we're actually in, right? It was renting for six hundred, and now you're doing it as an executive rental and averaging thirteen, fifteen hundred a month. Yeah, rented, right? That's and we got a lot of this furniture used, or I had some of the art already in storage. Um, I always look online for people that are selling furniture, and like the furniture was barely used, and we got some mm -hmm. great deals on it. So, but yeah, I had to buy a Murphy bed brand new, I had to buy a little bit of art brand new, and a TV, and that was basically it. Everything else was kind of like used chic and yeah. you know probably only spent like three or four grand furnishing it which we paid that off in like five or six months with yeah rentals. no doubt that's amazing no, and so cash. now kind of the after repair value yeah so this is what we bought it for and then we put in 90 so we're what is that 320 all in and now we're looking at this number here, right? So we, we basically, I was waiting for a really good comparable to come on the market. So there was, there was a fourplex that sold for over $500,000 in Sarnia. Um, so now we're going after that refi and yeah, who knows? This might even appraise in the high force. It's not quite like London, but we do mm -hmm. get, we are getting strong values here in Sarnia. And so how do you approach the appraisal scenario, Corey? Like, are you bringing your own comps to the table or are you just letting the appraiser in and letting them make a decision? How does that process work for you? I'll let them know the comps that I think it should be compared on. I mean, some of this stuff, it's starting as a smaller city. There's, it's, we're 65,000 people. There's not a whole lot of stuff that trades in the fourplex yeah. range. So there's only so many comps there's going to be that. I know all the comps anyway. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, when you bring in your appraiser, you always want to try to massage the situation or at least make sure they have all the information that they need to, to make mm -hmm. their decision and their analysis, right? So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and so just kind of circling back, but I'm sure a lot of people have questions on this. Do you mind just kind of breaking down further? You know what this credit looked like. How do you bring that up to a seller or the seller's agent? Sure. So you know we we always do home inspections. Even though I've been doing this stuff for 15 years, you know I'm. I'm not a, like an electrician or a plumber, all these other things. Neither is the home inspector, but they, when someone inspects hundreds and hundreds of homes, they, yeah. they know what they're looking for, right? So I not only bring in a home inspector, I'll bring in a roof person, an HVAC person, um, you know, whoever I think or whatever the project might need the most work on, I'll bring those trades in and just say, look, can you give me a half an hour of your time? I've given you a lot of business over the years, or I will be giving you a lot of business over the years for people that haven't done a lot of this stuff. And even if you have to pay like one hour of their rate, you know, so you've spent, I don't know, three to $600 inspecting the place, like you're gonna know probably more about that property than the owner would. Mm -hmm. So, and I did, right? So yeah. then we had a lot of information to go back to the table and say, look, um, when we first saw the house, there was snow on the roof. We didn't know the condition of the roof. It needs a roof, like shingles had blown off the roof. It, you know, I didn't yeah. know that when I made my first offer. So gotcha. um, we went back and, you know, negotiated this credit. We also negotiated, some other things like um, working with, you know, to, you know, to help the tenants move on. There was some rent credits and moving credits and stuff to have people yeah. move on. So they also paid half of that cost too. Yeah, and that's a big part if you're going to be able to get these new higher market rents is you need to figure out a way to get that tenant turnover, so. Exactly, yeah. we just like to always, you know, we, we, we wrote a letter when we put our offer in. Um, we just said, hey, we want to restore this thing to its former glory. That's my track record. That's what we do. Um, not to say that they were just slumming it out and that sort of thing, but it's like, hey, we want to actually give this thing a, a real big breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. And we did. So it, it shows really well. And now 
instead of all these band-aid repairs, it's actually been repaired properly and it's going to stand the test of time for another 20, 30 years. So. Yeah, I love it. This is a beautiful century home. You got the yellow brick, you're so close to downtown and all the amenities that Sarnia has to offer. Like, this just seems like a no-brainer for the executive rental. Exactly. Um, and we could also rent out the garage. There's a garage here too we can rent out. We can rent out space in the basement. We can eventually charge for parking here. It's got two driveways. So there's just, we have Wi-Fi in here. We can actually charge. Um, there's one more unit once it turns over. We can you know, say, hey, do you want to pitch in 20 bucks for Wi-Fi? You know, so. And all those little things add up over time, right? Same with they the do. laundry, an extra hundred dollars a month. It they really, do. all that's just adding to your bottom line, increasing your ROI, increasing uh, the valuation if you're using a cap rate. Definitely. When you're when your tenants see that you provide a good product, they don't feel like you're gouging them or you're trying to like squeeze them and pinch them and stuff like that. They just realize like, hey, for me to provide this kind of a product, we need to price things a certain way and we need to charge mm -hmm. for certain things and. Everything goes up every single year. Taxes go up, utilities yeah. go up, everything goes up. So your rent will have to go up too, right? So yeah, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Corey. Really appreciate you taking the time to uh, break down the numbers for us, especially in such detail. If people want to reach out, what's the best way to get in contact? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Um, I well, I'm on YouTube, on Matt's channels and stuff like that. Hopefully, on my own someday too. But um, yeah, feel free to reach out if you ever have questions. Stay in touch, guys. This is how you make money in real estate. This is what the big guys do. This is what you need to do as well. If you guys are enjoying these videos with Corey, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel, and until next time, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks, guys. Bye.